name is Dennis Lindsay. I'm uh, the, high, the owner of the Athletes Gym and I've been a strength coach for high performance athletes for 30 years. Um, and uh, I like to find a good cause. So we basically put together a fundraiser this year. Uh, it's something we're gonna try and do more regularly now on an annual basis. And the idea is that um, we're seeing a lot more athletes with different issues related to mental health and how they're able to um, cope with that throughout their sport or their, their sporting lives. Um, so we decided that we'd jump on the idea of starting to, to make this a, a purpose. Yeah, I'd say the, the main callus would be um, a hockey player by the name of Abakar Kozmikov who was trained with us uh, as an athlete getting ready for the OHL. And um, unfortunately, Abakar uh, took his own life uh, last season. So the reason why we got involved is to make sure that players who train with him and future players that we work with understand the importance of being able to communicate better, cope better, work as a group better, be on a team better, all those types of factors to hopefully prevent that kind of thing from ever happening again or from happening again in, in our environment. So a 24 hour run was, uh, it was fun. It was a good challenge. Um, I think it's, uh, I like the idea of me still challenging myself through physical training uh, events so that, that way the athletes appreciate that I'm still also training and working hard at something and having some goals. Um, the 24 hour one was a nice goal to set and I think it was very fitting to the idea of dealing with mental health issues because your body and your mind play tricks on you when you're running for 24 hours to try and, and amass a certain amount of mileage. So I think it was a nice uh, glue to bring everything together. So we have a GoFundMe set up that's um, that's still open right now, and we're hoping people will still um, put some money towards that. We have had people contact us since the event and, and still put some money in. Um, it's basically the link is in our bio for on Instagram. The um, the main objective we had was to hit ten thousand dollars, and we're a little short of that still right now. But because we're short of that, and because World Mental Health Day is coming up on October tenth. I'm actually going to challenge myself again, and I'm going to do a double marathon on October 10th and um, try and finish off raising that awareness and getting a little bit more money built up so we can um, pass the fundraiser over to the organization that we're supporting. Um, so we decided to work with the Canadian Center for Mental Health and Sport. And um, I'm really happy we did. The reason why we picked them is not just because they actually take any funds that they get to put towards things and put it towards athletes who have specific needs or, or might you know, require some sort of special services or things along those lines, but they put a lot of time and effort into research. And because they're doing so much research, that's what's gonna make us all stronger and all better because they'll have the answers down the road on why does an athlete think a certain way? Why do we have post-Olympic depression? Why do we have pre-Olympic depression? Why do we have you know, athletes all of a sudden who look at they're on top of the world being able to handle everything and then they just can't all of a sudden, they have to disappear and go away for a little bit. They're doing that kind of research. They're working out of, mostly out of Ottawa University from what I understand, but they're doing a lot of research with different groups and trying to find and understand the rationale behind the problem. And I think that's a key. Whereas a lot of other organizations, because donated money to, will take the money and they'll disperse it out there for different programs, but research isn't necessarily being done. So Canadian Center for Mental Health and Sport was a real nice bridge for us to, to focus on thinking long-term and thinking ahead. Um, yeah, I think, so I think the big thing we're trying to push is the idea that you, you have to communicate. You have to be able to communicate. Um, I'm not an expert in psychology, I'm not an expert in, in mental health awareness. Um, and as a performance coach, I might sometimes have even the wrong stance towards, you know, suck it up and get to work. But I do know that people have to be able to discuss issues. And I think as teammates, you're the best opportunity somebody has to deal with their problems. As much as we have some great programs out there that offer wonderful support and critical, um, you know, critical situations, I think that not many young athletes in the age groups of 15 to 18 or even in the young 20s 
are going to go and seek that help. I think if you notice that your teammate isn't acting normal, if you notice your teammate has got something they're struggling with, that you have to be the pressure and be the person to talk to them and get them to talk and stay on them enough to make them want to talk about something so that you can at least help them A, alleviate some of that steam or that pressure that's building up in them and B, understand that it's okay to talk about it and that, that, that somebody recognized it in them. So I think pushing for communication is still the number one most important thing. And again, I could be wrong, I'm not a mental health professional, but that to me makes the most sense.